Okay, so I've had quite a lot of people ask what settings should I use for this world and that world and different thicknesses, etc, etc. It's really, really difficult to tell you. Um, a lot of this is down to experience. I've got a couple of bits here of inch, quarter, scale ground off with a flat disc just tacked together at the corners so we've got a, a nice fillet weld. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put three welds along it and I'm going to change just one thing and you'll see how just changing that one thing can change the world. Now I'm going to do one in my normal manner, just how I would normally pick up a welder and weld. And I'm not going to show you it because I've been told that uh, continued exposure to the welding uh, glare can uh, damage the sensor. I'd love to know how um, Welding Tips and Tricks does his because he does some lovely um, videoing of welds. But anyway, so there we go, that's the first one. This is just, as I say, just switch the welder on. I was using it on 3mm plate last time, so this is just as it was set up for 3mm plate. I was using 3mm plate downhill, um, so this should be fairly okay. Just give it a quick wire brush up, let's have a little look at it. So I'm no expert, I'm no, I don't call myself a welder, I use welding in my job, that's the difference I think. Um, so that's the first one, which I would be quite happy with, I'd use that one all day long like that. There's no undercut, it's quite a little bit of a crown, not too much. Probably, I suppose if we did a brake test and penetration test and all the rest of it we'd see, but I'm not going to go into any of that now. I'm just trying to show you what the, how the affecting one thing can change a world. Right, now I haven't changed anything. Literally, just going to go faster. This is the sort of speed I'd probably go if I was coming downhill, but we're again, we're on the flat. Um, probably coming downhill on something thin, I'd use that sort of speed. And you can see the difference. It's a bit more raised. It's a bit neater. Put the glove back on. It's hot to hand as a wire brush. Quick go. Um, yeah, I say it's, it's slightly more raised. It's a little bit neater. Um, a little bit more weld in the or filler in the world, even though I was going a little bit faster. Still no undercut because I haven't changed anything else. If you listen, you'll hear the sound is the same on all three worlds. I haven't changed any settings except my speed, my travel speed. So we'll try the last one, and now I'm going to go quicker. No, beg your pardon, I'm going to go slower, slower than the first one. See what what that does. And so if you listen, it's exactly the same as the other two worlds. But if you time it, you'll find it's probably going to take me longer. Not that it's I haven't purposely done that, but obviously it's going to take longer if I'm going that much slower. As it turns out, I think the world's going to be. A touch longer. Yeah, it's a little bit longer, but there you go. Now then, you can see again, of course it's getting really hot now, hang on. Get something to hold it down with. A bit of quick brush up. So you can compare. Alright, let's have a little look. There you go. You can see it's, it's messier. It's, yeah, messier. It's slightly wider. Um, still not undercut, those bright bits at the top is just reflection, it's not undercut, but that's the messiest of the two, uh, big pardon, of the three, um, but if I was just doing a normal everyday sort of job, I wouldn't worry about it, but as I say, that's my normal that I aim for, that type of look, um, the middle one, if I'm doing something really posh, maybe I'll try and get it to look a bit neater like that. But my everyday average 
world is the one on the left, on the right, sorry. I mean left, me right. So let's go and have a look at the welder, and I'll show you why. Another reason why I can't really tell you any settings. I'll go around the back here, um, through all the junk, all the crap. There it is. It's an Arctic 300 amp three-phase welder. You can see the gauge is buggered, so I can't tell anything. Um, when you pull the trigger, you don't get anything, and when you try for the amps, you don't get anything. So I can't give you any idea. So I go off these dials. I've got a big dial and a little dial. Big steps and little steps. The big one's on in the middle and the little one's towards the end. So if it works out accurately, you could say it's probably 150 to 180 amps, somewhere in that sort of ballpark, if that's how splitting the, the middle works out. Which, again, it might not, but it's, it's somewhere to start, a bit of a ballpark. So we go around, all the way back around and have a look at the wire feed. I'll show you what we've got on there. As you can see, just another dial with meaningless numbers. It's just on just over seven, which means nothing. However, finding the wire speed is dead easy. Absolute piece of cake. So I'll just quickly show you that because that's something you can set fairly accurately. So this is probably the only thing that I can tell you is accurate. Get your stopwatch out. Get ready to pull the trigger. Obviously not arcing on anything. Start your clock. Pull your trigger at the same time. And hold it for six seconds. And when you get to six, bang, stop. So zoom out so we can see what's going on. Now what we do is cut this off. I've got a pair of pliers here somewhere. Measure it. Where are those damn pliers? They were here a minute ago. I've been using them just now. For God's sake. <laughs> there they are. Under the camera. So, cut that off, and we measure it. Get under there. Oh, I can't even get the blooming fingers to work to hold that under there. Right, that is, what have we got there? 25 inches. Bang on, 25 inches. So, that gives us 250 inches a minute. So that is fairly accurate. Uh, figure. Give or take a few inches. So, the last one, gas. Now this one again, I can't really tell you because I just set mine so that it's barely coming out of the gun. It doesn't even register on the uh, gauge. If you listen, hear it and it sounds as if it's rushing out quite a lot so I might have to turn that down a bit but it's not registering. And that's how I judge mine because someone said to me, oh put a flow meter on, put a flow meter on, it'd be far better. So I went and bought myself a flow meter. What a useless thing that was. Put it on, set it up and for some reason to get the little amount I wanted you get a delay. So you pull your trigger and it takes forever to come out and you get porous weld. You turn it up to get enough coming out instantly and it's way too much. Absolutely way too much gas. So I oh, sod that I'm gonna waste too much gas so I've gone back to my normal way. I just turn the regulator up until I can barely hear it. There you go. If it's if I'm using it in the wind I'll turn it up a bit more. But in the in the workshop just barely hear it. So there you go, that's why it's really difficult for me to suggest settings. Um, there's so many variables, and you can see I've just altered one, and that gives so much difference. Oh, and by the way, I'm using 0.8 wire. I used to use 1mm all the time, but I discovered or realised I was doing more smaller jobs um, on sort of, I don't know, 16 gauge 
getting up to three or four mil than I was from four mil up to ten mil or twelve mil or whatever. So I thought it's pointless getting a big wire, especially for the little fiddly jobs. So there you go, thanks for watching. Oh, just remembered. T shirts. A few people ask about the t shirts, which I've worn in one of my other videos or a couple of videos. They are available, they're on Teespring. So if you want one, check out uh, the link that I shall put below the video and get over there quick because they're limited time.